regulations, no dancing with you. Hello. Ah, welcome back. That's quite the thousand yard stare. Believe me when I say that you did everything you could have done, and even found time for a little collateral salvation, despite my instructions to the contrary. I won't feign disappointment. You were as noble as the situation was not. I only hope you weren't expecting a neat and happy ending, or a, I would have cushioned you better for the vertiginous letdown. This was only a small, ugly battle in a long, long war. Remember Solomon Island as a learning experience all about evil. Evil cannot be swept under the rug, buried beneath the artificial turf. It must be dealt with quickly and absolutely. That's our cue. Without conviction, we are nothing. You saw that pretender Beaumont hold a weapon that once united kingdoms and banished stellar gods, and a lot of good it did him. Hmm. What a difference conviction makes. The sword was Excalibur. It belongs in an occult museum, not with some roadside diner Lolita who fancies herself a black magician, but we will find her. Let's face it, it's not the first witch hunt we've ever launched. We must. If such a thing were to make it to the open market, it's the end of the secret world. That reminds me, Detective Inspector Shelley will be needing our assistance. Don't keep her waiting too long. It might wear on her sunny disposition. Mint? Terrible habit. I need to quit smoking, but I think I'll have to start again to get off the mints. <laughs> Ritual murders are tough on the digestive system, but it is part of the job. Part of this assignment. It's tough and it takes some getting used to. Not everyone does, so they keep having to send me fresh meat. You'd think they'd do a more thorough job with the psych evaluation. The assignment is called Cults and the Occult for a reason. While you were out of town, we tied a couple of homicides back to the exotic black markets here. Unnatural homicides. If murder was ever a natural part of things. We'll take care of it. We always do. But before we do, you'll need to have a poke around the crime scene. Some things need to be kept out of the official reports, even if the reports are automatically filed under Agenda 71. It's procedure. Besides, Sonic likes to send his own people for anything of this nature. I assume he told you what you're looking for. Frankly, I don't want to know. I'd warn you, but I imagine you've seen worse since we last met. One more for the road? It might help keep your breakfast down.
This is Nick Lamb. I'm recording this as a reference for those who come after me for future research. I, I retrieved an item from a crate that came through the warehouse. I could hear it from my office the night it arrived. It whispered to me. It's an Egyptian mirror in the shape of anchor. Very old, can't place it. Ebony frame, polished metal surface, but not copper. Inscribed with the symbol of the sun god, Aten. But most incredibly, it's full of stars. The mirror isn't a mirror, it's a window into another world. I'm going to London. I have contacts there, and I can find the tools I need. Ingredients. I'm going to find a way to open the window. The stars are talking to me. I don't sleep anymore. When I slip into dreaming, I hear them. They whisper. They, they, they tell me to, they tell me to do things. The, the mirror is hungry for blood, for flesh. Oh, God, help me. I can't stop myself. I want to do everything it's asking me to do. Oh, what's happening to me? Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus fucking Christ. What have I done? What have I done? I've killed. I fed the mirror. It was insatiable. It wanted more. And then the window opened and the darkness came through. Now this th thing inside me, it's multiplying like, like worms squirming in my soul. If, if the darkness breaks free, it will... I have to trap it inside me. I have to bind it in a prison of flesh. The, the thing inside me and the mirror that unleashed it. There's a spell. I, I find a book. It's I need to sacrifice myself to trap it. It has to be contained, even if it means... Oh, my God. My God, have mercy on my dark soul.
All familiars, ma. Oh, sweating. Shocking, but uh, nothing new or indeed entirely unexpected. Oh, trafficking in a cult. Paraphernalia is older than time. King Solomon had a famous collection, and uh, I mean, I'm told Xerxes was a keen hobbyist in his prime. That's not all we hear about Xerxes. He was a man with a sizable body of work. Glimpses of ancient erotica. Oh, first edition? I'm sorry. Are we interrupting? Uh, the black market. Uh, our technological evolution is, is something of a myth. The most powerful items in the world are all uh, very old. Very, very old. Unfathomably old. Uh, and equally priceless. Redistribution of that wealth began around the time of the Phoenicians, which is in itself an interesting story. The Phoenicians were cleft from the bosom of the Templars. The two brothers were at the head of our organization until they uh, suddenly parted ways. Over a woman? It's usually about a woman. How exciting. How droll. Always a bum rap. One founded the Brotherhood of Phoenician Sailors, uh, or as they are known today, the Phoenicians. Hmm. So, it could be said that this uh, despicable practice, well, you know, it, it, it's our own fault. Undoubtedly why the Templars have always been adamant about policing this trade, Venice directives or not. <laughs> but even the Phoenicians knew the rules. Unwritten, unspoken, but rules. They, these items should never find their way into reckless hands. No matter the offer. I mean, the alternative is... Disaster! Well, I think we could all use a stiff drink after that. Oh, splendid. Like, tuck your shirt in. Were I someone of loose morals trafficking in forbidden relics? <laughs> Heaven forbid. Egypt would be quite the honeypot. Its ancient evenings are still heavy with power. Stop me if you've heard this one before. I met a traveler from an antique land who said... Two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that it sculpted well those passions red. <laughs> no, really, stop me. I'm grandstanding. Two weeks ago, we received the poem Ozymandias on the back of an unsigned postcard from Cairo. It is, and always has been, a warning concerning gods and god-kings thought left to the shadow of history or to romantic poetry. In an entirely unsurprising coincidence, we have been petitioned by the Council of Venice to respond to a matter in Upper Egypt. A great evil is rising in the sands. That's actually what was written, a great evil. Clearly, this requires our particular touch. The council are ineffectual, but they take their peacekeeping responsibilities seriously, deathly seriously. The other societies will eventually be forced to respond. We should lead by example. This is one of the places civilization began. Let's see to it that civilization doesn't end there. <laughs> 